Hi, it's me again, and today we're looking at Knock to Luca by Shem Phillips. In this game, you're playing as gatherers, trying to gather jellyfish to take to the local healers in your village. How this game works is you have these cards right here, and as you can see, you're trying to fulfill goals with different blocks representing different dice you have to fill in. So each person will have, well this is set up for a four player game, you divide these up evenly whether you have two, three, or four people playing. So for a four player game, you would have three workers to place out there. So on your turn, you're going to take a look at the board and you see all these different colors and different dice. So for me, mm, I'm probably going to want blue, but there is also a catch. Everyone gets a card right here with a color of different jellyfish on it. Mine is orange. That means at the end of the game, for every orange on completed orders I have, I'll get points. We'll come back to that later, but it's just important to keep in mind for when I select cards in a minute. So, on my turn, I'm gonna look out here, and boy, if I could get a lot of blues and oranges, that'd be great. So what you're gonna do is, you're gonna call out a number, not a color, a number. I take this pawn right here, and let's see where I wanna go, where I can get some blues and oranges. I'm gonna go right here. Now, I go in a straight line, so that means either I go all the way to the end here, or I go all the way to the end there, and I call the number. I'm going to say six, so I would get these dice, these dice, nothing there, and these dice. So here are my dice that I have. Now I can place as many of these as I can on my cards. So I would have, and the number does not increase the number of points. It has nothing to do with the points that you get. So that, and that, so that was actually a really good pull for me. I almost completed two of my cards, well my two cards. Now the leftover dice will be passed to the left with everyone taking one until they cannot be used anymore. I will always get skipped because I've always used mine, but the person to my left can use that purple, so they'd put that right there. And so you would go around in order until everyone has placed all of these workers. And then whatever dice are left, you sweep them off the board, you mix them back in with the remaining dice, and then you, um, you roll them all in the box and you reseed the board. And when you're seeding the board, you put four in each of the inner rings and five in each of the outers. So, scoring points, how does it work? Well, let's say, for example, I had completed this card right here. You'll notice there's a little marker right there and a point total up there. After you complete a card, you clear the dice off, throw them in the box. So I will get one of these red tokens, which you can see there's yellow, brown, and red. As you keep getting these, they become more and more valuable until the very last one is worth eight. So you may want to focus on just one. And that's not the only reason. You see, at the end of the game, if you have the majority of a color, let's say they're half gone, you will receive these and get these because you have the majority. However, they're flipped over to be only worth one point each because otherwise it would be completely broken. But let's say I turn that one in. Yay, I flip it upside down. At the end of the game, I'll get a point each for these orange squares right here. I'll get a point for the card. Whoop. I get this token, ooh, shiny, I need better lighting. And now I go over here to these stack of four, these four stacks right here, and I will take my next card. So me personally, I would probably take this one for this player, because not only is it worth two points, it has another red thing, it has three oranges on it, which means if I can fulfill this, I would get a lot more points. Now because of the way dice can get passed around if there's excess, other players can complete cards on your turn. However, if they complete if you both complete a card on the same at the same time, the player whose turn it is gets first choice over which card that they take. For the the game is uh, played in two rounds. After the first round, you flip this over. 
it's given to the second place player and you go counterclockwise that way everyone has a that way um you know it's a lot more fair <laughs> not one person has first player advantage for the entire game so at the end of the game you count up how many you count up the uh, point totals from the top right count up your bonus color on completed ones see who has the majority of these tokens and then also count the face value of the tokens that you have and the only other uh, scoring is you see these two dice right here for every two dice you have on uncompleted cards you get a point and the winner is the player with the most points that's a very basic overview of the game I love it a lot there's a lot of tension turn tension you know I hope I hope you know Susan over there doesn't doesn't take this spot right here I really want to go why did you go there why would you do that you only need one of those I needed three and hoping that you know when someone calls out a number that maybe you'll just get the green that you wanted well I wouldn't want green but that player would want a lot of green and um, it's just a lot of fun kind of like Vegas dice the other day not a lot of complex rules but a lot of thinking about where you want to place things a lot of turn angst and uh, it's just a lot of fun I highly recommend it. Um, this one I think is actually you can find still, um, as long as well as Vegas Dice. Um, some of these will be really hard to find, but this one is not. I recommend hunting it down, fishing it out, if you would, for yourself. That's nachos for lunch.